I feel like it's been a hot minute since I've done a speed reviews on my channel. I have a lot of products here that I feel like I haven't given enough attention to, given you guys like my final thoughts on. So I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. I do tend to yap a lot. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. Starting off, I have two primers that I have been testing that I wanted to mention. The CoverGirl True Blend Skin Enhancer Sticky Grip primer. This one is so nice. It's very gel-like. It does dry down to give you that tacky finish, but it's not as intense as something like the e.l.f. So if that one was too intense for you, you might really like this one, but it's not going to give you that like intense hold that the e.l.f. one does, but I do really like it. This next one from Catrice, this is their anti-redness primer with Sika and Alatonin. I do like this one. I will say it's a little bit thicker and harder to work into the skin. And if you're not careful, you can get like that green cast. So it can make you look a little bit sickly if you apply too much or if you don't work it in well enough. I do think it does a good job at color correcting, but it just takes a little bit more elbow grease. Moving right along, I have one foundation. I did a full like first impressions wear test on this Performa foundation from About Face earlier this year. I think it launched in January actually. And I've mentioned it in passing a couple times, but I just wanted to give you guys like a final review because I have gathered my thoughts over all this time. I think it looks beautiful when you first apply it. It really does blend and melt into the skin super seamlessly. It doesn't like look like it's sitting on top of your skin like some foundations can do. The main reason why it's not one of my favorites is just because it doesn't wear very well on me. It just only goes like five hours and then it just starts to break apart. It really sinks into my pores. It breaks up around my mouth. It's just not the most long wearing. I find also that if you use too much of this, it can look a bit heavy. So it's good, but not great. I have actually three liquid bronzers to mention. The first is Drugstore. It's from Milani. This is their liquid contour. This is amazing. This is probably the best liquid bronzer contour I've tried from the drugstore. It comes with a sponge tip applicator, which you either love or you hate. I do kind of like how small this one is because you can get a really precise application. It's super pigmented, but it's easy to blend out. It wears all day long and it dries down. So I really love this one. The only downside I would say is that there isn't a super wide variety of shades or undertones. So Milani, we need you to expand the shade range because the formula is bomb. One that is higher end that I feel like doesn't get a lot of hype is Iconic London and Iconic London in general does not get a lot of hype. This is their sheer bronze liquid bronzer and sheer bronze is right. This is a very very super uber duper sheer liquid bronzer and I personally have the lightest shade in Beach Vibes. I would say it's probably better if you are interested in this product to go up a shade or two. This one I can only use in the winter time when I'm like at my super duper palest. I really like it though because it blends really easily and I like the sheer quality of it because it lets your natural skin peek through so it just gives you like that clean girl no makeup makeup effortless bronzed beautiful look it's like is she wearing bronzer is she not wearing bronzer it's really really seamless on the skin so I really love it but I think it's for a very specific type of look a very specific type of person so you just have to know what you're getting into the last bronzer is from Say. This is their Dew Bronze Liquid Bronzer. This launched earlier this year and I have the shade Salt. It gives you like a semi-translucency so you can see your skin peeking through underneath. I like the tone of this one. It's a little bit more cool tone. It blends out really easily. It looks super seamless. The only thing I will say is that if you try to build it up too much, it can get patchy. It starts to like pick up on itself. And that's what I found with the blush as well. I picked up the blush at the same time as I picked up the Dew Bronze. This one is in the shade Spicy, which which I absolutely love. It's like the perfect reddish brown, like sunburnt, delicious shade. And it looks intense, but you can blend it out because these are a bit more sheer. And even though these are called dew blush, dew bronzer, they're not greasy, they're not oily. They do kind of dry down and set down, but they give your skin a little bit of a glow. So I really do love the finish. I love the formula. I love how you can see through it. But again, like the bronzer, you can't really build it up or else it'll start to get patchy. So with that one little caveat, I think they're really good. Just don't try to build it up too much or else it will be a hot mess. Okay, we have quite a bit of blushes. First, 
first off the nyx butter melt blushes these are gorgeous super super pigmented very blendable on the skin though and i love the shades this one in particular is had butter it's like this hot orange that i have been loving obsessed with in the summer it is so pretty so vibrant so life-giving the only thing i will say again is that these are very pigmented which can be a good and a bad thing if you have deeper skin you're gonna love it because these are gonna show up but just be careful if you have fair skin these can be super intense it looks super just like a satin gorgeous finish on the cheeks it's not flat matte it's so pretty it has a little bit of luminescence to it and i love the shade range i also really love the packaging i think it's super cute and i like how the color of the packaging corresponds to the color of the blush super easy and convenient a random powder blush from the drugstore this is an oldie these are the rose powder blushes from milani this is in the shade blossom time rose i really love the packaging and the embossment it's super pretty it's kind of a warmer nude i would say it has a bit of orange in it but it's not overly orange and it has a little bit of a sheen on the cheeks so it's really pretty but it's not too much it's not overly pigmented it's kind of like a nice blush topper a good option from the drugstore a high-end blush i think these launched a year or two ago these are the cloud crush blurring brush it that's a tongue twister cloud crush blurring blush from too faced first of all the packaging is super cute these are a matte blush and usually i do go for something more satin or luminous on the cheeks but i really love how blurring this is on on the cheeks especially most of us have texture or pores on the cheeks so sometimes it's really nice to have a very softly diffused matte blush and i also love the shade of this one in the summertime it is in the shade tequila sunset last blush this is the cheeks out cream blush from fenty beauty it is super duper cute and tiny i have the shade pinky promise this is super pretty it's the blush that i'm wearing today it is slightly dewy it doesn't dry down completely but it gives your skin like that glowy wet gorgeous look hi Shofi. hi Shofi. you're a good girl yes you're a good girl i know this shade in particular does have a little bit of like a pearlescence to it so something to keep in mind i kind of wish that wasn't in there but it's not super apparent on the skin it blends out really easily it builds up nicely it doesn't pick up anything underneath of it the only thing i will say again is that because it has that more like dewy finish that doesn't dry down all the way it's not the most long lasting cream blush but for the finish i don't mind i think this is a really good little cream blush i have one eye primer this is the eye primer from anastasia beverly hills it's very pigmented a little bit goes a very long way it gets the job done it's not my favorite eye primer i personally prefer the eye prep eye prime eye primer from juvia's place <sighs> i got a cat hair there's something about it that's just a little bit easier to blend on this one is tacky so it does grip onto your eyeshadows but it's a little bit harder to blend on top of it works but it's not my favorite I have a liquid liner from la girl this is the artist brush pen eyeliner this is a super black really pigmented eyeliner it's affordable and it works like a charm i really love this and i'm usually more of a felt tip liner girly i just find them a little bit easier to control but this brush tip is actually really easy i like how long it is and i like how it's a little bit fatter and then tapers in i don't know there's just something about it that makes it really easy to get a nice crisp smooth opaque black line and you can't really beat the price Side note, the Millennial Pink packaging is very cute. I also have this Cupid's Arrow Full Color Silo from Nabla. This is like a eyeliner eyeshadow stick hybrid. It's in the shade Cappuccino. It's like a cool brown. I use this as the base of my eyeshadow look today and that's my favorite way of using it. These blend so easily and once they set down they are like locked in place. So I really love this. It's especially nice too for like the lower lash line if you don't want to get a bunch of fallout with a powder eyeshadow. You can just smudge a little bit like on the lower lash line and call it a day. They have a lot of fun shades and they're not super duper expensive. I have one mascara. This is the lash extender from e.l.f. I have the brown color. This is their tubing formula. It is a true tubing formula. It comes off with just warm water in like little tiny tubes. So super easy to remove. And this is the mascara I'm wearing today. I think it gives pretty good length. It's not the best at holding a curl, but most mascaras that are not waterproof are not. But I really, really love this for every day. I hate removing mascara, so I love a tubing formula. And I'm super excited that more drugstore brands are exploring tubing formulas i almost like it better than my milani tubing mascara that one but it does get a bit clumpy because it's such a wet formula this one's a little bit drier so you can get a little bit more separation i think i want to get the black one next 
I also have the Major Dimension 3 eyeshadow palette from Patrick Ta. I don't really think I've talked about it too much on my channel, but in my everyday life, I do use this quite a bit. It's pretty much every neutral shade that you would ever need for an eyeshadow. The quality is really, really good. This white shade is the most intense, pigmented, beautiful white matte I've ever used. This black is amazing. So deep, so pigmented, so rich. I love all the shades. In the summertime, I've been reaching more in the top row, but in the winter, I do love these more like neutral cool tones. You also get the creams over here, which I do like. It's not something I reach for all the time, but I like the option of it for creating a base. So this is a great formula. It is pricey, but I can't deny the quality is very good. Okay, let's quickly run through these lip products. I have a lot. First up, I have this Catrice Tinted Lip Oil Gloss and Glow. This is a lip oil stain, so it does stain your lips. Like this shade in particular is more of a like a red, hot pink. It's in Drama Mama. It feels good on the lips, really cushiony and makes your lips look shiny and plump. The only thing I will say is with continued use, this can dry your lips out, so just beware. I also have this little In The Mood lip balm from LA Colors. I think I got this at Dollar General a while ago. It's like a little lip balm that's like a pH adjusting lip color, so it kind of changes to like that pink lip color, but if you're just in a pinch and you want something super easy and quick to apply on the go, throw it in your purse. This is a great product if you like those pH adjusting sort of things. I also have the cutest little lip balm from, I forget the name, it's in Korean. I'll pop it up on the screen or put it in the description box. You can get these off of Yes Style or Amazon. I have this like bright hot orange color, which actually is quite flattering and so pretty and like life-giving to my complexion in particular when I have a little bit more of a tan. I love the formula of this. It's more sheer. So even though the shade looks kind of intimidating, it does sheer out a bit on the lips. Wears off beautifully. It's not the most long wearing. Obviously, it's a lip balm. But the packaging is just so fun and definitely a conversation starter. So they have quite a bit of different shades. If you're not into an orange, they have other ones to check out. It's not super expensive. They work really well, but they're also just such a joy, like a little toy and make a product in one. I also have the Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain from Milani. These are really, really great. They do stain your lips. They're really long wearing. They don't dry out your lips and they give you kind of like a not matte, but not super glossy finish. They're kind of like somewhere in between. The glossiness does wear off the longer you wear it, but you're left behind with a beautiful even stain. I have the shade Rose Rising, which is a gorgeous rose color. It's a little bit on the cool tone side. I do wish there was more nude shades in this line. A lot of them are very pink or red, so that would be my only critique. A liquid lipstick I would tell you to steer clear of. These are the liquid lipsticks. I'm not sure the exact name from Give Beauty. This one is a gorgeous red shade, honestly, in Original Recipe. It's a really like nice blue red. I like the way they smell. They smell kind of like vanilla-ish, like a vanilla frosting maybe. Like the vanilla frosting you find like from Pillsbury or something. I don't know. It just doesn't wear very long at all. It's like the least long wearing liquid lipstick I've ever tried. So it's just not worth the price in my opinion. I also have this sheer plumping lip gloss from Lottie London in, I don't know what the name is. I'll put it down below. These are plumping. So they have like that slightly minty feeling. I love the shade of this. It's like a really pretty like pinky nude. They give a lot of shine and make your lips look like super voluptuous. It's a little bit thicker so it can be sticky and it does plump your lips a little bit. So if you're super duper duper sensitive to that plumping feeling, you might not like this because it doesn't hurt, but it's not necessarily comfortable. And then I have a crushed oil infused crushed oil infused gloss from Bobbi Brown. This one is in In The Buff. It's a really light nude pink. It feels great on the lips, very hydrating. The color is pretty. It's just, I don't know if it's worth the price. I think if you can get it on sale, I don't think you'd be disappointed, but it's just nothing to write home about in my opinion. It's not the most shiny. It's not super long wearing. It's not like ultra nourishing. It's just okay. Last but not least, we are here. These are the so juicy little like plumping click up sticks from ColourPop. I have Vacay Mood. It's a gorgeous pink nude. It's the color I'm wearing today. I did stain my lips with the Catrice before, so they do look a little bit more pink than the actual shade of this, but I really love these. They have a little bit of a minty taste slash feel and smell, but they're not tingly. They don't burn. They're not painful plumping. They are not gloopy, but they are pretty pigmented and really shiny. Just one of those like easy to apply lipstick gloss hybrids. It's very similar to the Tarte Maracuja plumping lip 
thingies. Really comfortable, really cute, and I really love the shade of this one in particular. So yeah, that is it. We have made it to the end of this video. I don't even know how many products that is, but it was a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed these little mini reviews. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you all are doing well, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.